Namaste. <laughs> I want to tell you about the greatest, most advanced technology ever developed by humanity. Am I talking about AI? No. <laughs> although I think some of the scientists today have artificial intelligence <laughs> because they miss the significance of consciousness. That's one of the things, that's one of the reasons I like Einstein so much because Einstein kind of sneaked consciousness in the back door of his theory of relativity and showed how the whole universe is ready to adjust so that the speed of light is never exceeded. It's really kind of wonderful, but that's that's another video. Uh, uh, it's not really related to our purpose here. What we want to show is how religion is a way of getting a direct message to God, what we call God, which is actually the essence of sushupti consciousness. Now, everybody has sushupti consciousness. Sometimes we call it the subconscious or the collective unconscious. Huh? The psychologists like that word. But what is it really? When we go into deep sleep, everything goes away, even dreams and we are in a void, emptiness, pure nothingness. And this is because Sushupti consciousness is pure cause. It's not the effect of anything. That's why there are no impressions, no perceptions, no thoughts. But what we do have in Sushupti is memories. We have memories of past incidents and past experiences that we bring with us into Sushupti. And these are the total, totality of our past experiences. So, given that Sushupti is pure causation and not the effect of anything, it is, for all practical purposes, God. And when we bring our memories, our impressions, our experiences into Sushupti with us, then they become causes that manifest things in the future. You know, and, and this is why people like A Course in Miracles, huh? People, they're saying, expect a miracle. Huh? And why people are praying and chanting and doing rituals, Vedic rituals and like this, to get certain things. Huh? I mean, the, the one prayer, the, uh, the prayer, the Rudram, Sri Rudram, uh, one whole part of the prayer is just give me this, give me that, give me everything. I mean, literally, there's a line in give me everything. <laughs> chamakam, the prayer is called. The Chamakam, because cha is the and in Sanskrit. So it's give me this, cha that, cha something else, cha money, cha house, cha servants, cha wealth. Everything. Sarvam. Sarvam chayati. <laughs> so, by making so many impressions of manifesting things, then when we go into Sushupti in deep sleep, we bring those impressions with us. We bring those memories and those uh, experiences with us. And so they tend to manifest. I mean, it's not that simple, but that's pretty much how it works. So this is why religion was developed in very ancient times. 
where we have a symbol or a metaphor for God as a person. Yes, it's anthropomorphic. Yes, it's more or less imaginary. But it works. And it works because of the power of language and the power of symbols. We went over this in the Matrika series. And basically in the Matrika, the different symbols and sounds of the Sanskrit language each stand for a particular creative potency, a particular flavor of manifestation. And when we combine them into words and combine the words into mantras, then when we chant these mantras, especially in association with Aum, oh, they very easily manifest in different effects in the world. This is magic, huh? I made a video recently about divine magic. That's what this is. It's using the power of the divine, the power of God, to manifest things in our lives that can aid us in the process of self-realization. Now, of course, there are people who misuse it and seek selfish gains, and they get them. But then what happens is that their gains, their possessions, their attachments destroy them. They burden them with cares and responsibilities and lead to all kinds of unforeseen consequences. Whereas the person who goes in with a theistic attitude and says, God, give me this and that for your service, for your pleasure, not for mine. And these things don't really belong to me, they belong to you. See, this is the correct attitude. And with an attitude of wonderment and gratitude, non-attachment, these things come into the life as gifts from God, not as something we did, but as a miracle. You know, it's really nice to get a, a miracle. <laughs> it's like a surprise gift, you know. It's a wonderful thing if we don't expect it. So the secret that I'm trying to give you here is that, you know, in today's world, there's a lot of atheistic attitudes due to reductionistic scientific logic. Actually, it's illogic because they don't take into account the effects of consciousness. So therefore, everything that the scientists do actually works by the same principles, because the way they discover things is that they'll set up an experiment, they'll set up a problem, and then they'll uh, kind of meditate on it in their own way. <laughs> and. Uh, fill up lots of blackboards with math, and then they'll go to sleep at night, and the next morning, they'll come up with a solution. <laughs> That's how Niels Bohr discovered quantum mechanics. That's how Einstein discovered relativity. Read the biographies of the great scientists. They got their discoveries, their knowledge, the same way. They just don't believe in God, usually, because they're rational. Mm. <laughs> but actually, actual rational thought is to believe in the use of the Godhead as a symbol, as a metaphor. Because God being the creator of the universe is beyond human intelligence, beyond human beingness, beyond human power. We, we're, we can't conceive of what God actually is. So, okay, we come up with a metaphor. We make a symbol. We make a story about that symbol. And then we have different dealings 
with that personality, with that metaphor. And these result in all kinds of effects. Why? Because sushupti is pure cause. So we can create so many things simply by going into sushupti with a certain mindset. I like to do this exercise when I go to bed at night. It's helpful to chant a mantra, although not really necessary once you really get into the practice. But chanting a mantra helps you move through the ocean of dreams to the far shore of sushupti, which is emptiness, nothingness, nirvana, nirvana. And so this is how we manifest things, by going into sleep, going through dreams, dreaming of the things that we want to manifest, and then enter into sushupti, carrying those impressions with us. This is a technology. This is a magical, secret, divine technology. And so if we, imitating the scientists and uh, materialists, deny the power of these metaphors, we simply cheat ourselves. Hmm? We lose the power to make miracles which is such a wonderful power because it can bring us the things that we really desire and especially if they help us along the way on the path of self-realization. So this is the secret. I don't know why people just don't rave about this stuff. <laughs> Maybe because it's hard to do. Yes, you have to have some background in meditation. You have to be able to control your mind to a certain degree to do this practice successfully. But, you know, it's like anything worthwhile in life. You have to practice it. And if you practice concentration, meditation, different themes of concentration and meditation, such as the jhanas of the Buddha, you will gain the ability to go into sleep consciously through the ocean of dreams to the other side, the far shore of Sushupti. And that is where magic resides. That is the home of the Lord. That is the heaven that Jesus said is within you. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya.